Welcome back, Indiana Sports Speed Radio on this Friday. It's December 8th of a big sports weekend coming up. Lots and lots and lots of basketball, as we've been talking about all morning. But there's plenty to talk about on the football side as well. Bring in, welcome Shannon Griffith. Uh, looking forward to having him uh, each week and keeping keeping us up to date with what is happening on Indiana football. Shannon uh, up in the Fort Wayne area, also a part of the fan, fills in there amongst other things. Former coach, uh, go ahead and give give the peeps your resume, brother. <laughs> Well, I'm a 28-year career college football coach, and for those that may know, I worked at Ball State under Bill Lynch, who was a IU head coach at one time, and then after those days, I spent the better part of my year as a head coach up here at Manchester University before retiring and getting into actual fundraising as my day job and do some of the broadcast stuff on the side, so... I wanted to be undefeated, Jim, so I always could get behind a mic and be able to tell people and coaches what they did right or what they did wrong. <laughs> I, I like that fundraising part. I, I can uh, volu- uh, volunteer to be a, a, a part of your uh, whatever you're raising for. We can yeah. definitely use some of that. Yeah, do some higher education fundraising right now for uh, Hanover College. So congratulations and uh, good luck with them. A great, great spot located down in Southern Indiana, as I call it, because I I went to Floyd Central down in the Southern part of the state. I do not consider Bloomington, Southern Indiana, uh, (laughs) South Central Indiana. Uh, But Indiana football, the new hire of coach Kurt Signetti from James Madison. It has come with um, a huge it's the biggest response to Indiana football I have seen at minimum since I was in school and Bill Mallory was there, but there was no social media then. So I can't compare it on that level, but from a social media standpoint, there's nothing to compare it to. Uh, I can just tell you by looking at my own numbers that I'm like, Holy crap, this, uh, there was something said about Indiana being a quote unquote sleeping giant. I don't know about giant, but they are definitely sleeping and waiting to be woken up because <laughs> there are fans that would fill Memorial stadium on a regular basis. If there was a quality product there, I really, I, I believe that uh, I, I don't expect fans to stay in their seats through four quarters of crap football when right. you don't think a team has a shot to win, but when you have a team that that they may be a seven and five team, but you believe that they have a chance to win every game, that's a different story. And I think that that is, first of all, that's part of what Kurt Signetti did at James Madison. He pointed out they won six one score games last year. Indiana lost five one score games last right. year. And that's a mentality. That's a culture. And that is all that permeates to the fans. And so he's, he's won the press conference. Uh, I sent out a Twitter post. He won the press conference today. He won the Simon Scott uh, Hall <laughs> assembly hall crowd tonight with that Purdue sucks. Uh, yeah. And so does Miami and uh, 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 Michigan and Ohio state too. Boom. It was over. I mean, that just got people jacked up. Now he's got to follow through. Yeah. And I know that a lot of Indiana players have hit the portal. Brendan Sorsby has already committed to Cincinnati, the quarterback, Jalen Lucas in the portal. There's going to be a lot of guys. He doesn't get back. Mm -hmm. And that is because this is a completely different culture that he's bringing. It's going to go from L and I don't say this in a bad way towards either, but it is going to go from an LEO to a, Go FY, uh, <laughs> semi. It's kind of. I mean, you 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 know what I'm Memorial saying. The highway. Yeah. Yeah. No question. I mean, you know, he's a he's a throwback to the old days of you know the the Bo Schembechler types where you know he has a little bit of guff on him. Bill Mallory'd be another one that you know he has a certain certain set of ways that he's going to do it. It's proven. 
and he talks about his blueprint and implementation. And I respect the fact that he brought a big, significant portion of the guys from James Madison with him there to Indiana. Because when you have something that you believe in, you better bring the guys that, that, that's been helping you all along implement it. Because trying to teach other coaches your ways sometimes is a little more difficult than you know one perceives. But yeah, there these guys that are in the transfer portal. I mean, it's changed everything in college football. Guys jump in there to see what their value may be at another place. Look at Donovan McCauley. Here's a kid before the season. Everybody was hoping he'd become what he did become, and now he's in the portal and he's got you know, offers from Michigan, Penn State, all over the place. And, uh, yeah, there's a guy they're not going to get back. You know, and that's that's going to hurt in the sense that those long, tall guys are hard to find that can play the game. Now, E.J. Williams, I think, you know, if he can stay off the injured list, he's got a chance. But, uh, no, he's done a – you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Kurt has, you know, done – done it the right way in the sense that he went to a division two school from Alabama. I mean, that's never heard of. That's how bad he wanted to be a head coach. And he went there and I know there were some family ties to that situation, but he won. The biggest one is Elon. Elon is the one that I think uh, gave him the nudge that what he was doing was correct. And he liked the way it worked. And at Elon, which is a difficult place to go win because of the academic aspect to things, um, you know, the one thing that he'll have to learn, he's not at James Madison either anymore. You know, <laughs> that's going to be a different, different bird as well. So uh, you're right. He didn't, seem to, he, he didn't seem to realize that when I asked him about uh, <laughs> dealing with, with NIL. I'm sure you saw that question I yeah. asked him about, which I was a little taken aback. And I'm thinking, uh, brother, this ain't the Sun Belt. Yeah. But uh, I also think that he was trying to he's trying to set a tone. Say this this is not too big for me, uh, and, and I and I wasn't suggesting that it was. Right. I was just I was just asking. I was serious. How are you going to deal with that? Because that's a real question. If you're going to compete in the Big Ten as Indiana wants to, and they're at the bottom right now, let's just be honest. They're not competing in the Big Ten. Right. But now, not only do you have to worry about Michigan and Ohio State and Michigan State and Penn State and Wisconsin and Iowa and all the other Purdue and other teams you've already battled, but now you've got Washington, Oregon, UCLA and USC that are coming in as well. So it only gets a little more difficult. And there's no question. I mean, you know, you look at the portal now. Um, I just saw the other day that uh, Ohio State's putting together a package somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 to 25 million to keep Marvin Harrison Jr. there for one more year. I mean, three that, million. That is totally ridiculous. Yeah, but that's the money that's going out the window right now. You take Donovan McCauley, he probably is going to get half a million to go somewhere else. Now, is Indiana going to match that? Well, when you only have three million in the coffer, they can't. Um, and that's why I think you've made a great point about this is that with everything that's changing as quickly it is, as it is in college football and – and what is on the table right now, you're going to have to have eight to $10 million a year at a bare minimum to be in a competitive arena, to be able to go in and get that coach rule at Nebraska said to get a good quarterback, you need $2 million. I mean, that's the craziness that's going on right now. And then even the and now some of that stuff is over is overblown oh, as well. It's overblown as well. I mean, there's no way of telling because nothing gets released in that regard. But as you saw with what the NCAA president put out this week, um, where his that's game changer. Yeah. Well, you know, if you put, you know, at a bare minimum have to pay you know, half of your athletes, both men and women, uh, $30,000 a year at a bare minimum. Okay. That's somewhere in the neighborhood of six, 7 million a year. So it is changing the face of it. Now, whether we can get it back to some respectability and all that, I don't think so, but it does change the comp, the, the face of what you do from recruiting, uh, and how that impacts high school kids um, to, you know, are you going to be a portal guy that's always going to bring in 15 to 20 guys 
um, it's, it's a, it's an environment that's totally different. When I was coaching, if you needed a player that was older, you went to the junior colleges, right? Junior college is almost non-existent anymore in terms of recruiting in, in college football, but it's changed. Now, the one thing I think you and I had talked about before is just the high school recruiting. You know, Indiana had somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 commits, high school commits, uh, prior to the uh, change in staff. And I believe now it's down to 12 Um Part of that is some of the players that had been offered scholarships by the previous staff was not honored by the incoming staff. And that's the necessary evil. I wish uh, Scott Dolson would have made some type of outward commitment one way or the other to these kids because they've been Indiana commits since, you know, way back when. And now in a matter of, you know, a week after the season, they find out they don't have a scholarship to Indiana University. And that's the tough part in this environment is that you got some kids that were left out in the out in the dark without a scholarship. And sometimes that can be a little bit of bad PR. Well, and I understand that. And but fortunately, that should generally only happen like there's a coaching change. And yeah. if there's a coaching change as a player, you have to know that whether your scholarship's going to be honored or not, your playing time might not be honored. So <laughs> you, it's up, it's incumbent upon you to do a, a, some quick research. And then also, was it there was the the kid that sent this out was a long snapper, right? Had, Tom, Tom Allen was known that he would like to go out and get a long snapper that he was going to have for four years and he would scholarship them. But wasn't Indiana one of the only major schools that would scholarship a long snapper? Yeah. I, I you know, it's not that it's unheard of cause that's a high commodity. Um, the kids that can do this, you know, at a high level, it's not unheard of that schools will go out and, you know, maybe offer a long snapper in high and high school, but it's, not something that you see year in and year out. And you're right. Kids, if kids got to go where they want they're where they're wanted. And if they're not wanted by, because of change in staff, you're, you know, why would you go and be miserable um, and not have a place to play? But you're right. I mean, that, that was a, you know, kind of a one-off situation there, but I do think it was poignant on how he basically announced that he was decommitting. Um, you know, with his tweet, because that's what I, you know, that's what you worry about a little bit with the PR stuff. Um, but, and again, that reminds me of, uh, uh, and I'll never stop using him as an, as an example, Grant Gallon. Uh, <laughs> we go back, what, five, I don't know how many years now when uh, he was, was it, it was Tom Green, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, that I, I forget exact the specifics, but it was a similar situation, but right. he was someone that probably should have never been offered a damn scholarship to IU. He wasn't yeah. good enough. And he made this big stink of it. And I'm like, dude, grow up, uh, <laughs> put your big boy pants on. And I kind of got that. I feel bad for this kid in a way, but I'm like, yeah, that's not a good look. I don't know that I, that, that, yeah, I just but- didn't like that. You, yeah, you don't want to, you know, of course, you don't want to burn any bridges. He should have not, you, you know, come out in that type of way. But like you said, everything's in the, in the uh, world of X now that, that can get out there quite quick. And the other thing that, uh, you know, I, in, in Coach Signetti right now, the wheels are going a thousand miles an hour. I mean, he's got not only the portal issues that he's dealing with, he's trying to lock in kids to come in the next two weeks because the early signing period is December 20th. Um, I just saw they offered the Ohio University quarterback, the Rourke kid, who's thrown for like 7,000 yards at Ohio. Um, Now, whether they get him or not will be kind of a wait and see. I do like the fact that he's got some recommits on on that list that, that that was out there, especially the the Cosin kid up in uh, Michigan is a really good tight end that I think will do great things at Indiana. Um, but he's trying to do all this. He's got his staff in place. And, uh, I, you know, 
this weekend, the next two weekends for him are vitally important, vitally important because they're only going to get one chance with these kids on campus and it's either going to be a yay or nay. Now, just because a kid uh, may or may not sign on December 20th, that's not the end all be all because, you know, it can go all the way up through June for all that matter. But we kind of get wrapped around by December 20th and then that date in February um, that we've lost even more sight of that used to be the national deal. But um, I like what he's done. I, 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 you know, I don't know coach Signetti. I know people that work for coach Signetti, uh, Brian Haynes, uh, just to show you, I have a great eye for talent. I gave him his first job in college football. He worked for me as a defensive line coach after graduating from, from ball state. Uh, he's a great kid. He was with my son there at Indiana under Kevin Wilson. When my son played there at IU back in the, what would have been 13 through 18, uh, played there. But, uh, I like Kurt, I like his uh, ability to relate to the kids. I think he's done great things at James Madison as the defensive coordinator, as has the Shanahan uh, gentleman that's co- co- coaching the offensive side. So he's got a young, invigorating staff that he needs. He's got his blueprint. I think it's going to be a matter of time. Now, he doesn't want to be uh, labeled by what they may or may not be able to do the first year. And he's had some great turnarounds the first year. He did it at Elon. He was eight and one. Um, does that happen at I, IU? I don't know. But I think the biggest thing is the collectives and the NIL and how that all go, go, coincides. That was huge, Jim. That three million. And I think the Hoosier Connect had raised a million like a week before. And if people want to get involved, even giving a 50 bucks to a collective, if you get 200 people to give 50 bucks, that's huge. You know, as you know, that's my business. And that's what I try to tell people all the time. You may not have tens and thousands of dollars laying around to give to uh, X, Y, or Z. uh, But you'll find out the more the people that give the $25 and $50 are the ones that make a huge impact. 